Goa has much to offer. For the young and carefree, it's a party destination. If you're religious, you'll be mesmerized by the churches and the temples. And for foodies, there are mouth-watering seafood delicacies on offer. And then of course, there are the beaches. It's no wonder then that Goa is among the most popular holiday destinations in the country. Truth be told, it's my preferred place to unwind too. But there's more to Goa than meets the eye. This May, we celebrate the 150th issue of our magazine and we at AutoX like to do it in style. So to revel this moment and to explore some virgin beaches, local flavours and architecture, we decided to go from Goa southwards towards Gokarna and Murudeshwar. Before we head southwards, we spent a day in Goa with the aim to visit some unexplored places. We started the day with a visit to Diwa Island. A ferry from Old Goa took us to the island that was once a massive Hindu settlement. Believe it or not, the ferry cost us mere 10 rupees one way. Two wheelers and passengers right free of charge. After exploring the island's rich history and culture, we drove across town to one of the beach shacks at Anjuna to indulge in some local Goan cuisine. While my colleagues made the obvious attack on seafood, being a vegetarian, my choices were limited. I had the vegetarian knockoff of Goan curry and despite being mocked by my colleagues, I simply loved it. With the bellies filled, the next stop was Four Trees Magos. Originally an armed outpost of Adil Shah, the Rees Magos in all its glory was built by the Portuguese. Overlooking the quiet Mandovi River, it was the first line of defence to the port town of Old Goa. The Four Trees Magos fell into decay over the last couple of decades but was restored and opened to public in June 2012. With just about an hour to go before sunset, we headed towards Sao Jacinto Island. Unlike Diva, Sao Jacinto was petite. The inhabitants have vowed never to give the island on lease to tourists or industrial groups. It's no surprise then that the island remains pure and has a charm of its own. As I watched the sun go down, I couldn't help but think to myself, Goa is so much more than just beaches and parties. Our next stop is Gokarna, which is about three hours away on a narrow, winding highway that let us finally stretch the legs of our steed, the Jeep Compass. Gokarna is much more than its beaches. It's rife with historic legends, glorious stories and intimate temples. Hidden in the middle of a small hill is a cave with a narrow entrance. In the company of a few bats lives a sadhu who is the priest of this cave temple. The sadhu explained the legend of how Gokarna got its name, that Shiva emerged from the ear of the cow and that the hole in the roof of the cave was that year. So on our way to Murudeshwar, we decided to spend a day in Gokarna. In terms of topography, Gokarna is a lot similar to Goa. There are beaches, there are hills around, but in terms of feel, it's a lot different. The beaches are cleaner, a lot less crowded and thereby more relaxed and peaceful. We're at the Om Beach right now, which is one of the most well-known beaches in the Gokarna region. After a good dose of vitamin C at Gokarna, we started the second leg of a 150km drive to Murudeshwar. Cutting a twisty lane into the woods, they were just the kind of roads we love to drive on. And also on which the Jeep Compass excels thanks to its instant punch and sharp handling.
Murudeshwar is nothing like Goa or Gokarna. The sheer scale of the Murudeshwara temple overpowers pretty much everything in the town. After spending some time at the temple, we drove around in search of some more beautiful vistas. From the narrow city streets to places where there were no roads, the jeep compass took it all in its try. They say the most beautiful vistas are found on the road less explored. On a road trip like this, in a car like the Compass, which features a legendary all-wheel drive system, it would be a sin not to take it off the road. Needless to say, the Jeep didn't so much as bat an eyelid. Of course, we couldn't help but head to the beach for a bit of fun as well. Muradeshwar marked the end of this 150km journey for us. Everything from this machine to the roads and the site have been spectacular. With our souls renewed, it was time to call it a day on this epic adventure. But stay tuned, there's a lot more still to come.